Hi, I'm Peter Rose, founder of Longwood Currency Trading. How do you set Forex profit target goals if you don't have any uh, past structure to look at to see where order flow has congested and that might be a problem in, in getting to that profit target? That's what we want to talk about uh, today. And before we do that, I got to get my coffee. Uh, we got a new coffee maker and uh, so hopefully that's going to produce a really good cup of coffee so that I can talk and we're actually going to get on the whiteboard a little bit today. That takes care of the second necessary part before we can start this discussion <laughs> soon. As uh, you can see, it's a little little dark in the house today. It's been raining. We're um, uh, mid-August of 2023 and uh, yeah, a little bit of rain. I'm going to wipe off that board here in a minute. That's my uh, uh, schematic diagram for the uh, computer simulation program I'm writing on some uh, uh, staging and building analysis and uh, I've been working on the program based on that. So I'm going to erase that and then we'll get on with our little chat. All right, let's get into this. What's a profit target to start with? Well, you know, when you're doing your entry analysis, you take a look in, at, the, at the chart, at the price action, and you make a probabilistic determination as to whether you think that price is going to rise far enough if you're in a situation where you're a rising trend and you're going to go long. If you think that price is going to have the momentum, what I call the momentum, you'd call it anything you want, price action, juju, whatever. Will price go from where it is up to some spot, 10 pips, 20 pips, 200 pips above, whatever your whatever time frame you're you're trading on. I try to keep things simple. I'm a day trader. So you've heard me say in many of the videos um, that I'm not going to consider a trade opportunity unless various conditions present themselves, one of which, just one of the conditions, there are not many of them, but one condition is that there's at least 20 to 30 pips that, that uh, price has to move unobstructed in order to get to um, wherever that profit target is. You've noted that I don't consider the fact that I've got, let's say, 30 pips of real estate available that I expect to get 30 pips. The profit target is exactly that. It's a target and so you're hoping to hit that but you probably won't hit it in the bullseye. You might hit it out on the outer rim you know, if you're doing archery or throwing darts or something. But you're still going to hit the target. But it might be not exactly 30 pips away. Well how many pips do you want to get? Well, look, if you're trading off the daily chart, you want to get 70, 80, 90, 100 pips or whatever. If you're a day trader and you only want to make one trade a day and you want to get done in two hours like I do, where you, one or two trades maybe you could get in in a two-hour period of time, then you can't be looking for 30 pips. you got to know that the 30 pips is there, so it may take you five or ten pips to convince yourself that the price is actually moving there. You understand that you're moving into not a line at 30 pips but a zone that could be uh, uh, 10 pips. So you're losing um, maybe 15 of the 30 pips right there. Well that still leaves you a potential of getting 15 pips. If you could get eight you're in good shape. You lock it down and you go. That's the entry analysis um, that you do that gives you this probabilistic go no go bid ask um, decision that you need to make right and that's kind of sort of what I want to talk about when the model for that analysis isn't there so let me get on the board and put that down first okay so this is a sort of situation that we're looking at, right? And I apologize for the poor lighting in the room here, but uh, it, it's all over the place coming through the uh, windows. Here's our chart, here's our graph, and uh, this is normally what we're 
that we're looking at. We're looking at something like this. Boom. And there you are. And so through some arcane methodology, you say, oh, okay, we have some support here. Um, I mean, it's, it works as a zone, right, that you have. So you have this zone, and this piece of it right here is 30 pips, and this is maybe uh, 8 pips, and this might be 8 pips uh, covering the whole thing. So you've got uh, a 16 pip, this whole bar here is 16 pips. I love my writing, right? So this is sort of the equation that most, uh, most entry analysis is based on. Because you want to know where has there been prior price action that's created a, a block. And so as you move price into it, you probably are going to have some kind of retraction away from it. That's sort of the judgment that you've got, okay? All right, so that's, that's that. Let's do this. Same kind of sort of graph, but this is what it looks like. We say, well, we definitely have this rising trend, so we know we're going to go long. But where's the order flow? There's nothing to the there's nothing to the left here. So how do you judge a profit target? You can't. And that's the trick of it. If you don't have any order flow to the left, and, and, and by order flow we're, to, we're looking at um, oh, four hour chart maybe, uh, maybe out to the daily to see where in the, in, the, in the back has there been anything that's been going on. If you go out to the daily chart, I mean, you could be looking at 160 some odd days back in here. Does that really count for for order flow for right here on a uh, five minute chart or a 15 minute chart, even a daily chart? Well, maybe not, because remember, order flow is created by large institutions, not retail traders, but the large in institutions that are fulfilling client orders. And so you get order flow congestion when the customer and the client via the uh, intermediary, the institutional trader who's acting as a broker between, oh, I'm, I'm in, um, uh, in England and I need to buy American uh, engine parts, it's $4 billion worth of them, so I got to sell pounds and buy dollars. So those buy-sell decisions that the institutional trader is, is making in order to fulfill that customer's desire uh, for liquidity and getting the currency that he's going to be able to make his purchase with, um, what are you going to do with $6 billion? You're not going to do it right away today. Then you'd simply be moving the needle on that price action such that you <clears throat> wouldn't be getting the proper value for your customer. You, you'd have him paying too much money for his dollars because you'd be the one in there creating all that buying effort. So you're, you're looking at this through the lens of what's the purpose of the Forex market. It's to, for, for international commerce exchange and money is the thing that's got to happen in order to make that exchange take place. You come over to uh, the U.S. with uh, two wheelbarrows full of pounds, nobody's going to take them. We're going to set up to do that. You're going to have to go to a bank and change those into U.S. dollars so that you can then go to McDonald's and buy a hamburger. They're not going to take four pounds for our, at McDonald's. They'll take, you know, six dollars, but they're not going to take four pounds. So when you get into a situation where you don't have this flow back there, which simply means um, in the time frame that you're looking at where you need to see order flow activity, which should be um, no more than several days back. I don't know how long it takes an institution to dump out a two or three billion dollar order. Um, 
maybe a couple of days. Remember, we're dealing with a $6.6 trillion a day market in the, in the Forex market. And so two or $3 billion is like shit dust. It, it doesn't even matter. So maybe you could do it in 20 minutes. It, de it all depends on the liquidity and what kind of price constraints that the, 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 the trader is faced with. Regardless of that, if you don't see some sort of order flow going on in the last 10 days, um, maybe there haven't been any large exchanges like that, or those exchanges have all taken place sometime, someplace down in here. You see, we've got, we could say, oh, we've got this order congestion here, and maybe a little bit here, but we've now broken past this, you call maybe call it a breakout. You still have to take the breakout and compare that to wh where are you going into, uh, right? And so what happens when your order flow is down here and you don't have anything up here? You're moving into new, new territory within the last 20 days or 30 days or whatever, that there hasn't been anything going on here. We're in a situation with a lot of the major currencies right now, again, mid-August uh, mid, uh, of 2023, where you don't see very much to the left of the chart. Might be uh, five days ago, 10 days ago, 15 days ago, where you're seeing a lot of order flow up to where the particular currency is, that you're looking at is trying to rise into. There's a lot of order flow going down here, but now we're breaking into new territory. Why? Well, because the economics of the world is changing right now based on certain things. And you look at the economics of that if you're interested in that kind of thing. If you're not, it doesn't make any difference. All you have to understand is there's been a lot of activity down here, but you don't see the activity up here. How do you determine what your profit target is? You don't have a profit target because you don't have anything that's going to cause congestion or, or anything like that. Can you trade that? Absolutely, absolutely you can trade it. Do you have 20 or 30 pips? You're going, let's say you're, on a day, uh, uh, you're a day trader. And so my advice to that is be happy with getting 10 or 8 or 10 pips. You know, if you can get 20, that's fine. So where's 20 pips on this thing? Well, let's say it's this level here. Let's call it this level. This is 20. Uh, that looks ugly. You won't be able to figure out what that is. Pips. And uh, so you're down here. So this distance, 20 pips. Yeah? But but there's no, there's nothing to base this level on. That's just saying, uh, let's let's do this. Let's try to get to the 20 pip point and see if, if we run into any sort of surprise orders here. Uh, if we don't, let's see what happens when we get to this 20 pips. We've got to be very, very careful because if you're trading on a five-minute chart with a period of a five, AT, a, a five, a five period ATR on a five-minute chart, which is what I do, you go up to the 15-minute chart, you're looking at seven to eight uh, ATR, maybe 10, 10 pip ATR. These are all relative to the game that you're going to have to play in your mind as to determining what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. So with a five period ATR, so you're looking at uh, five ATR, how many ATR can you go up before you have a reversal? And this price doesn't, doesn't just do this most of the time. I mean, uh, I made uh, 800 $800, $815 this morning in about two minutes. I came and looked at the charts as after I got up. I go, holy shit, this isn't going in my direction at all. It's, it's probably not going to come down. I went and brushed my teeth, got my cup of coffee, came back in, took a look at the chart, and uh, and there's nothing to the, to the, to the, there's no congestion of orders or whatever to where I thought we were going to we would need to get to. I had potential places down below, a uh, running short position, uh, positions down below here, but the price is way up here. And I thought, well, you know, I got to wait two or three days before this thing gets back down here to where I'd be wanting to go short. I don't want to go long because I'm, un I'm hesitant about the condition of the market to continue going long.
But I reevaluated that and I thought, wow, um, certain conditions have just occurred. Maybe I should set some orders, but I don't want to bet that this thing is not going to continue upward for another few days. But it will come back. It will react. Now, whether that will be a regression to the mean event, whether it will be just a, uh, an, order, uh, an order dump, some institutional trader goes, oh, we're going to take advantage of this high price. So we're going to dump a lot of it, clean things out, and uh, start over again. And I thought, mm, I'll bet some institutional trader is going to do that. So I put my orders in. I didn't want to go in small because, in, again, part of my evaluation criteria not only has to do with momentum, but it has to do with, um, well, it's a function of momentum. It's a, it's a force. How much force would, would, would price move if it was going to do a reaction under these conditions with the distance that price had already gone up, or I'm just going through this shit that I went through in my head. It doesn't take me very long to do that. I can look at it and go, psh, boom, and go through it, because I know what I'm looking for. I know those conditions. If I was to work with somebody and they would learn those conditions that they're comfortable with, it's still going to take you a while. How long is it going to take? It'll probably take you a minute to evaluate that, or two minutes to evaluate that and go through all the, all the um, options that you might want to consider in making a probabilistic determination is do I want to go in and how heavy do I want to go in at that point. So again, I'm looking at taking a short position and because things fall faster and more violently than they do if they're going up, even in a, a, a spike movement, the spike movements going up are not anywhere near as strong as when somebody yells fire and everybody goes for the, for the exit doors, right? So I said, well, I'm going to go in heavy. Well, not heavy. I'll go in medium. Uh, I'll go in with uh, two lots. I'll follow that up right away with three, and I'll pick another three uh, about five pips below that. So within about a, um, a 15 um, pip space, I'm going to load up with eight lots. That's a lot because I'm looking for if this thing drops below a certain level, it's going to pick up so much momentum that it's just going to drop like shit through a goose. That was the bet. And I bet that I could pick up uh, 10 pips from that, from my average position value of a 2, 3, and a 3. So I set my stop and uh, went out and got my coffee and came back. And I'm sitting here. My wife came in. We were talking talking about some stuff, and um, we're going through some recipes, actually, and we're sitting here, and I'm looking at the price, and all of a sudden, it kind of arced over, and it starts to hook a little bit, and it starts going down, and I said to her, I said, whoa, wait a minute, we're looking at this thing, and it went, <laughs> and 15 seconds, $815. But I had things to look at and consider, and I had that momentum into consideration, but the other component of that momentum was, is price in a situation here where there's been a lot of activity here, which means you're building up a lot of interest to see this thing go because it's broken through this. Even though I don't have anything up here, I don't have a pull, you know, like these uh, resistance zones and support zones, they pull price toward them until the orders get fulfilled right there and, and, then, they, and, then, they, and then they and they break away. Or you have a lot of stuff going on here that creates a push. The momentum is created by order flow. That's what the momentum is created for. Now whether the, that momentum is being created by a pull or by a push, it doesn't make any difference. If you're working with structure, then you can look at pull. If you don't have any structure up here, and you're looking at price here, and you're going, where is this going to go, right? Then your, your analysis has to come down and look at this stuff. This is what you're looking at right in here. And I don't know whether you can see the, the actual line. I mean, just.
Uh, just go through it here like that. So there's the actual price action that's happened, and that's why I'm saying this 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 box that I've drawn here. This is where this stuff is is forming, and now we've got this situation. Boom, and we've we've come out of here. So this, if this continues, and you know in forex it generally will do something like that, unless this push is really really strong, and then you get a like that. So here I'm looking at a push momentum as opposed to when you have a structure up here which acts as a pull. And I can't define all this stuff for you in a video, but you just have to look at the terms and listen to my videos and you'll, you'll be able to figure it out. And if you can't, that's what a course is for, or for uh, consulting. There are two, two considerations when you're dealing with, with push that you really don't have with a pull. And in this journey of this price moving up, there's two, two areas you're going to look at. You're going to look at what's happening here. And that might be 8 or 10 pips up. Again, I'm looking at a chart on a 5 minute uh, uh, time frame with a 5 period ATR. How far is that price going to go before it has a retracement? It could probably go 8 or 10 pips and then it's going to, like, like here, it's going to go, uh, let's say this is, this is the 20 pip level. Price isn't going to go straight to 20 pips. It's going to do this and then it's going to come back here and then it's going to do, and then it's going to, and then it's going to get to your place. So the big question is, how big is that going to happen? Because this thing could just continue to drop down. So when you're dealing with a push, you don't know how much push is behind it. Other than if you, don't, if you don't understand how to evaluate order flow, it's going to be difficult for you in the beginning in order to judge how much juice this thing has. And that may fade on you because the institutional trader may be finalizing his, his order and all he's doing is taking advantage of a lot of, of folks uh, that are setting limits, setting limit orders around in this area in here. So maybe when price gets up to here, it starts to do this. And you've heard me call this chatter. Chatter. It's when price starts to, starts to do that, which is a micro view of, of this. This is chatter maybe on a, on a, a daily chart. This is chatter on a five minute chart. This chatter might be uh, 10 to 50 pips. This is um, one to maybe three pips. So if this starts to chatter, you go out. So that's number one. The next thing you're going to look at is when you get close to this 20 pip target that you're going for, you have a sense for where does this kind of stuff begin to happen? Where do these pullbacks begin to happen? And on some of the major currency pairs that I have looked at, well, it generally happens around that 15 pip level. It goes up 15 pips and then it comes down 5 or 10 and then it goes up 25 pips, which is 10 or maybe over, and then it'll chatter event again. So as you come up to here, this is your number two spot that you look at. You start looking at this same thing. You start looking at this chatter event. So you get chatter there and you get chatter here. You have to be very cognizant of that because this could very well be the point where you want to say, you know what? I've gone through this first chatter event. Now I'm up at the second. How does this order flow going to push this more than the 20 pip that I'm expecting that I could possibly get stalled out on? And so you have to do this analysis. You do a, you do a brand new entry analysis when you get to this, quote, profit target area. Not the 20 pips, but the area, which again could be uh, 10 to 15 pips, right? So you do, you're, you're redoing some entry analysis and determine 
do you want to let this ride? If you're going to let it ride, do you want to stage more lots in? Where do you want to set your stop at? These are all things that you better understand the mathematical consequences of staging in and the distance to your stop in relationship to where your average price value is. Because if you get that wrong and you slip up and you have two of these staged lots get hit and taken out with losses, it could completely eradicate everything that you started with at the beginning. That's why I think a lot of folks are still losing money when they have a profitable trade. Um, I've done the work in order to determine what those figures and numbers should be so that the only place you lose money is if you get the entry wrong and it goes to stop and you're out. Once you get to a certain point in the um, cycle of the trade, the position, you're out of the entry analysis stage of the life cycle of a currency position and you're into position management and you're working through that, that's where you bring you start moving your stop up. It has nothing to do with building the position or staging or anything like that. All it's doing is protecting so that you're going from, I don't know, what do you want to set your stops at, entry stops, so 10 pips, 20 pips, 100, I don't give a shit what you're doing. But at some point, you want to reduce your, your, your exposure. Because that's the only thing we have control over. I don't have any control over what I'm going to win, but I certainly have control over where my stop is going to go. And you say, well, if you move your stop too soon, then there's a little retracement and you're going to get stopped out. Yeah, no shit. But if this little retracement turns into a major punch out, what are you going to do? You want to take a 3 pip hit or do you want to take a 20 pip hit? Those are things that either you're going to learn on your own and lose a lot of money or you go to somebody who knows what they're doing and you ask them, can you help me through consulting or taking a course or whatever. The course is the way to go, not a course that teaches you what a pip is and size in your bank and what a Bollinger Band is. That's all just ridiculous crap. The, the, the uh, consulting can, can solve a problem. You know, you, you talk to somebody in, in the, for a period of time at a certain dollar value and you solve that problem. By solving that one specific problem, the assumption is you already know all the surrounding stuff, you just don't know the solution to that problem. So if you spend uh, two or $3,000 solving that problem, then that never comes up again and you make twenty or thirty or $40,000 as a result of the investment of solving that problem. But if you don't understand the overall thing that's involved, such as something like this, where I'm talking about all this stuff, well, then you take a course, and the course is going to take you longer than just maybe an hour or two hours on the phone with somebody. The, the course is going to lay the foundations that, that create all of this stuff. And again, it's not what you see that's being offered out there for 500 bucks and or 49.95 on Udemy with uh, 16 video lessons and uh, support and resistance lines and all that other crap. D don't fall for that. You're wasting your money. Spend a lot of money to get quality education. Because if you're going to take a course, it's got to deal with building the foundation so that you can understand what to do here. If you already understand this foundation, you've been trading for a while, and you've lost a lot of money, then me telling you that you've got a chatter point here and you've got a chatter point here that you've got to look out for, you go, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'll do that. That's solving the problem. I've helped you. You don't have to pay me any money to do that. That's my goal. I don't want you to pay me any money. I don't need your money. Unless you, 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 you lack all this, this building process and understanding. I mean, if you're only looking to pay your light bill, you don't need me to teach you a, a course or to have any consulting with. But if you want to make 60000 bucks a year or 200000 bucks a year, you better find somebody that you trust that can start, start laying this stuff out. And again, don't be paying somebody a couple of thousand dollars for a course that isn't going to cover theoretical stuff like this because this is called trading. Bollinger Bands and Sport Resistance and Fibs and all, that's not trading. So, here's the issue in summary. You have a situation where you have some structure here that's pushed this price up and the concept for you is you don't have a similar structure up here. You have air, you've got open real estate. So be aware of the difference in thought process that you use in order to deal with a push scenario as opposed to a pull scenario. And I think 
Um, if you try that in your trading and you work through that, you're going to have some question, send questions. Send me an email. Um, if it becomes an answer thing, I, I'll be happy to help you out. If it's going to be more than that, then I'm going to suggest I'll tell you what the course is about and, 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 and what I do with consulting. And you can make a decision to whether you want to spend the money and do that with me or you want to go somewhere else and, and spend $500 or $1,000 or $49.95 or, or, or whatever in order to get somebody to help you solve these problems. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.